Ever been socked in the jaw? Or just seen it at the movies? Hello, David McMillan here, telling you something you probably already know, but don't think about too much. Like movie injury. Any reality in that? Interviewers often ask me, uh, what was it like in a gunfight or um, ridiculous questions about have I shot anyone? But the real point is, in my career, whenever these things came up, I really wanted to know whether I'd be so damaged I couldn't get away. That's the only thing. How bad am I? But what about the movies? That's where the idea comes from. How many times have you seen the hero get smashed in the jaw, usually by some huge palooka, and then just, oh, wow, uh, that must have hurt. Really, what mostly happens, especially if you're outweighed and, well, outclassed, as usually I am, I've got a duck, because if you get the impact of a solid blow to the jaw, it'll be dislocated. You'll be lucky if it's only teeth flying everywhere. Those can be uh, implanted and dented, all of that kind of thing. But usually you get um, not so much a fractured jaw, but where the mandible is connected to the bone, that is broken. It takes a lot of setting. It's extremely painful. And they talk about a wired jaw. No, it certainly doesn't happen every time somebody gets punched in a movie. Oh, and by the way, you're better off getting knocked out by a boxer. Yeah, sure, they will make you uh, see stars, and we'll come to that, but they know where they're hitting you. They can make your knees go from under you, and you'll be just out to it. But, of course, you know who they are, and you can see them coming. What else happens? Here's another thing. Somebody gets, uh, um, he's got the loot, he's running down the street, a police car, no, no, it's actually usually a good citizen, accidentally runs him over. It's not good, he does a couple of rolls, maybe some torn clothing, but he gets up, hugging his ribs, and limps off. But really, the reality? It depends on the speed of the car. That might happen at 20 miles an hour. It's not likely to happen at 30, because at 30 you tend to get tangled and dragged. But at the kind of 50, 60 miles an hour. And that's it. No, your innards are big. Uh, what it is, the, the sheer impact of it forces up everything inside and the pressure increase, well, that knocks not only the wind out of you, but ruptures a few things. Limping away? No. Perhaps crawling. More likely, not moving much at all. Hearing the wail of ambulances. Some of you might know that uh, one of my favorite characters is Daffy Duck. There was one where he's a, he's a traveling salesman, and I think it was uh, a look-alike to a nasty canasta. Goes up to him and says, uh, you got any brass knuckles? Daffy says, have I brass knuckles? Have I brass knuckles? The point is, if you actually get hit by those things, and Daffy says that, I'd hate to get hit by those little beauties, it shatters everything, but it grinds up the bone inside your skull, all around your jawline. And those who use brass knuckles seem to want to go for the nose, always a tempting target in any case. But what that does is it crunches up all the smaller bones, because you know under the nose itself there's nothing except a kind of, like a crater rim, and all those tiny fragments get mashed in. As for anywhere, eye sockets. Always smashed to pieces with brass knuckles. You're not getting over brass knuckles in a hurry. No, if at all. Who's the sap, or what's a sap? It's really a, a leather-bound cosh, usually with a, a lead weight in it. There was some effort in the 20s and 30s when these were used uh, professionally in the... Uh, union matters, to actually not kill the poor victim. But 
In the movies again, somebody will get slugged on the head with the old sap. They'll go down, wake up about an hour later, rub the back of their head. Oh, it's tender. But I can go on through seven scenes of the rest of the night. But in fact, they're not likely to. One thing's pretty much accurate. You do see stars, oh, that's what I've been told, especially because if the sap hits the back of your head, where the, um, the optical nerves go to for processing, it's the part of the brain that generates the illusion of an image. When the sap hits it, it hits all the synapses and the pressure of the chemicals generate a whole lot of light flashes. And uh, if, it's in, if you get hit there and it actually sends you unconscious, you may never see again. Well, <laughs> not quite the same way. What happens when you really get the cosh, the sap, the, uh, the rubber-covered truncheon? Well, it depends where you get it. A really uh, ugly professional uh, kind of torturers like to batter you around the ears. They, they don't necessarily want you dead, but the people who go all out go mad with it. They can strike you on the temple. That leads to a rupture and often internal brain bleeding. It'll take about uh, 24 hours to actually die. Uh, the last quarter of that's most unpleasant. Only one side of you works. But don't worry too much about getting to the hospital. There's very little they can do. No, don't be a sap. Don't get sapped. Ugh. Speaking of hemorrhages, body blows. Lots of movies will have great pounding by heavy set thumpers, knocking it into somebody uh, usually lighter weight. Now, it doesn't really help if you're bigger and chubbier, but it helps quite a bit for the skinny guy who gets a pounding around the midsection. There'll be a lot of damage later on. You might not notice it at first, but you will that night, the next day, and there you will need some hospitalization. It's the bruising and the bleeding combined, and the ruptures. It will take months. It's not like, uh, I don't know, strap up a couple of fractured ribs and get going. No, no, no. That doesn't really happen anywhere. It's a lot of groaning and very shallow breaths because you can't do better. Uh, luckily, I haven't been on the receiving end of much of this stuff. Uh, I kind of recognize the people who are likely to do it and find a solution first. Anyway, onward to the next ugly reality. I think I'll call this quick one, it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> Uh, Monty Python have made uh, quite a joke out of that, and it really was pretty much always a joke. Statistically, you're not really likely to get those convenient... Um, well, you know, they used to... In the westerns I watched as a kid, uh, if the hero had to get shot, or it was usually his sidekick, it was in the shoulder. That's not a great place to have a superficial wound, because it's not really... Oh, it went all the way through. It doesn't usually. There's lots of kind of cartilaginous bones for the bullet to squiggle around in, uh, especially those uh, round points. <clears throat> but they'll probably go through or down. Somebody I know rather well um, had made such a nuisance of himself with the police. When they got Ted, they made a point of shooting him straight in the chest. Uh, the shock of it sent him down, and he came to in the back of the police car and felt that his leg was wet. This damn bullet had gone in, been deflected around the sternum, and that's not the first time I've heard of this, and driven down through his body, seemed to do very little, and came out of his upper thigh, avoiding the femoral artery because it was going too slow. It's quite rubbery, that artery, by the way. Um, yeah, it's a, if you get stabbed, it's not... You've got to be unlucky for it to go right through or the right kind of knife, but 
Let's not refine those details, shall we? Here's the point. Bullet wounds, and mostly they're more likely to come from a rifle, and a high-powered one at that, they will go right through, but the shock wave, think of the huge power that the explosives have sent that slug through you. It's got a shock wave. Imagine it's like, I don't know, those sound wave images, and in those ripples, this is your innards being very rapidly disturbed, twisted, rippled. You won't live through it. You really won't. It, you probably, you could, if you, I don't know, it, in those rare things where it hits a leg, the back of it while you're running away, I suppose. But when it comes to bullets, the thing you will quite likely survive is, well, 22s. I mean, they don't really go anywhere. They're more likely to annoy people. Yeah, sure, I know somebody who was shot by one in the leg, and he said it was like getting a, a baseball bat there. But it was quite easy to operate on. And we weren't exactly doctors, I can tell you. Oh, we had lots of uh, pain-relieving medication, at least. That was something for Billy. Speaking of shockwaves, I think getting towards the end here, explosives. Yep, they, they use the air which is concentrated. Now, in the movies, people get blown up all the time. They fly through the air, they land, uh, they scratch themselves. In the slightly more realistic ones, they'll have a temporary deafness. Well, that deafness you'll get is um, temporary to, well, actually forever, permanent damage. Yeah, it depends on your age, depends on your luck but there will be some damage, and your hearing will never quite be the same. As for the fragments, if you're close enough to get any, they're going fast too, and they're kind of dirty things. They're dragging in bits of clothing and God knows what. You'd think when people are carting their explosives around, they, you know, add a bit of that alcohol rub on it, thinking of the infection. Or wipe their bum with it if they don't like you. Imagine a hand grenade in a swimming pool. See what it does to the water? If you happen to have any spare hand grenades, you could try that, but uh, I don't know. You can't trust the timers on it, so uh, let's not. But when they go off, what's happening with the water there, the, uh, the bubblation, I forget the correct word for it, but... It causes air bubbles and everything, and it'll cause air bubbles in you. And I'm not talking about any fragments hitting you. This is just the sheer power of it. And, of course, if you're too close, you become pink mist. Ah, uh, uh, that expression really stuck with me. It, uh, somebody reporting from Syria uh, led that one to my ears. That's when somebody's so close to the explosion, car bomb or whatever... There's nothing left, or perhaps some dentures flying somewhere towards uh, the horizon, but nothing but this gentle pink mist floating around. You won't be getting up and moving on from that one. Now, I've been painting a pretty grim picture of the reality of uh, wounds from guns and explosions and uh, saps and metal bars, all of that kind of thing. But there's always the other side. Ever seen in a movie when somebody gets stabbed in the back? Oh, 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 I can't reach, I can't get it. Stagger, stagger, then slump. No. It's not much of a consolation because, well, every, what would it be? I suppose every 80th uh, mad frenzied stabbing results in a death. Most of them, uh, people run away or talk to each other again or, or make up or go to the hospital. But quite a few people I've known over the years have stabbed 10, 15 times. I'm not saying without any effect, but it didn't kill them. Sure, they uh, started to get some internal bleeding, but it's surprising. Unless that knife is quite sharp and directed by somebody who unfortunately knows what they're doing, uh, then 
the chances of you actually dying from it are slim. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's in the same category of those people who, what, they, they think they're going to commit suicide, uh, cry for help, seeking attention, I don't know. But they're not cutting, um, what would you call it, longitudinally. They cut crossways and all they do is make a mess and dirty everything up. They, they won't die from it. They probably clot up before anything else or they fall asleep. No, stabbing... I've known some people to be stabbed 35 times and survive. But let's not try and work out some greater statistics on that. It's got to hurt. And often people don't react to it straight away, but it's one of those things where the internal bleeding of it is the thing you'll suffer from. The actual pain, the adrenaline and the shock of it and the frenzy to get away, that somehow masks that pain. And it's a, well, it's actually not as painful as all that. I've had doctors do worse things to me. Yeah, a local anesthetic, they call it. Well, okay, so there we are. Knife bad, leaf scars, terrible, but you might not die from it. These are the realities. In the movies, uh, they, even, even the throat cutting, the, that takes a real bit of effort. I mean, it's, the neck is sinewy. The, uh, yeah, I stopped that. I, I think we've had enough of uh, knife wounds, but I just had to make the point that it's not as deadly as the movies say. So, there we have it. The difference between fiction entertainment and reality. But uh, don't go out and test it. You can take my word for it. Life will bring you enough injury without you having to uh, bring it on. If this one survives, there'll be another one. But hopefully something a little less ugly. Good night.